Hey, hey, what is good, everybody? This is part two of my five-part series, The Top Five Best Free Scents. Today, we're going to be talking about Surge. Surge is an incredible scent. It's extremely complex. The possibilities are endless on this thing. First, we're just going to take a listen to it, check out some presets. I also made a preset bank that I'm going to put a download link for in the description. And after that, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of it, show you how everything works. So let's just get right into this thing. All right, let's open up Surge. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Menu, and it has a resizable interface. That looks good. Surge comes with a ton of freaking presets. So right up here from base all the way down to wind, these are made by the creator of the synth. Then there's literally 10 different third-party preset banks that also come with this. I'm going to play you some of mine. I always like to start with a good old-fashioned 808. Check out some keys. This preset right here, I did not make. Um, it was made by the creator of the synth. I just put it in my preset bank to make sure that I didn't forget about it. Man, so dope. Um, here's some pads. This one right here, I play with the mod wheel. Leave the mod wheel open. Yeah. I'm going to start by telling you this is a three oscillator synth. Here they are right here. One, two, and three. However, surge is like two synths in one. There's two of them happening at the same time. And... That's controlled right here where it says scene A and B and where it says single split and dual. For instance, this is that future split pad. Layer A is doing this. And then layer B is doing this. And because I have it on single, it's just switching back and forth from the two. If I put it on split, then the low notes are gonna have layer A. And then the high notes on my keyboard are going to have layer B. So you can play them together. And if you put it on dual, it plays them both simultaneously over top of each other. So that's something super important to know. When I say Surge is a three oscillator synth, it's really a six oscillator synth because everything is here twice. So let's initialize this patch real quick. When you first open Surge, it's going to default to um, this Sawtooth, which is in the classic menu right here where it has Sawtooth and Square. Over here where it says Bright, Neutral, and Warm, um, I'll let you listen. Obviously bright sounds a little brighter. This feature only works if you select one of these two under the classic menu. Um, once you select anything else, um, this little feature is null and void. If I click on wavetable right here, it's going to bring up a separate menu. And if you click right here, it has tons of wavetables in here. Basic, generated, one shot, rhythmic, sampled. 
let's just put it on one of these. I'm gonna select organ. Here's your octaves. Here's all your different uh, modulation sliders. Here is filter one right here and filter two right here. And right now they're both off. And these are the curves you can select. And when you click on them, it tells you what they are. Low pass, high pass, comb, sample and hold. Let's put it on a low pass. And then you've got an identical filter two right here. This determines whether you're hearing just filter one or just filter two or a mixture of the both. This is your main mixer right here. And right now, um, everything is muted except for oscillator one. And here's your volume. Let's unmute oscillator two. And let's get a Waldorf in there. Water four, why not? I'm gonna solo oscillator two so I can just hear that. And unsolo it. Now we're hearing both layers. Over here is your main ADSR for the amplitude. And then you have an ADSR for the filter. And this F1 right here is for filter one. And then F2 right here is for filter two. And when they're both at zero right here, they're off. So these default to off. So right now this isn't doing anything. I would have to move this down. And um, that's gonna obviously change the beginning of the note. Puts a little uh, funky beginning on it. And then of course, like I said, the main amplitude ADSR. You can make it, you know, pad or turn the sustain and um, decay down and make a pluck. Right here, this is for your pitch wheel. So right now it's down to and up to. If I wanted to kind of click here and maybe I could move this up an octave and this is where you select poly or just mono where you can only, uh, you know, hit one note at a time. These are the different kinds of mono. Like if you listen to this one, it's got the block little uh, filter beginning on each note. But if I do this one, as long as I hold down that first note, right here's the oscillator drift. And this is sort of a way to emulate old analog sense. It just kind of makes the pitch a little bit imperfect on both oscillators. Usually you just do it a little bit, it's kind of subtle. It's almost like, you know, think of the surface of the water moving a little bit, and that keeps the synth sometimes from sounding too like digital and stale and flat line. This noise color is congruent with um, this noise oscillator, which I just unmuted right here. <laughs> This is basically a high pass, low pass filter um, for your noise, which is awesome. Cause sometimes like, let me just solo out this noise. Sometimes I don't want all that like low end in my noise oscillator. I just want to put a little air up on the top. And that brings us to automation, which is all this stuff down here in blue. Let's say I wanted to automate this formant slider. I would go down here to LFO one, click it, and it starts to flash. And I'm just gonna draw out this fader. This is the starting point, the gray one, and this blue one is the automation path. So it's gonna start and finish. Here's the rate. You have different shapes, sine, triangle, square, ramp, noise, sample and hold, envelope. There's even a step sequencer you can just draw in and get crazy with. I use this um, envelope a lot, and right now you can't see anything right here, but if I start to bring this attack down, now this line of modulation is gonna cause this formant slider to just go from here to there. Um. 
one super important thing about these LFOs is if you want the tempo to be in sync with your DAW, you hover over this rate slider and do control right click and then you select tempo sync and boom. Here's how I would route like the mod wheel on something. Let's turn this cutoff back down. Click on the mod wheel and get it flashing and crank that up. And now, mod wheel controls it. All right, let's get into the effects unit, which is an amazing part of this synth. You'll notice right here you have A and B, which coincides with your A and B layers over here. Right now, we're only using layer A. These two rectangles right here will apply the effect directly to the sound. Whereas these two rectangles in the middle are effects sends. They're controlled by these two guys right here, effects one send and effects two send. And this is parallel processing. I would recommend like your reverbs and delays and stuff like that to put them on these middle two rectangles and control them with these. And things like distortion or chorus or stuff like that, I would apply directly to the effect. So let's click right here and you'll see it says send effects one and we've got delay, reverb, chorus, phaser, rotary speaker, distortion. Let's do a reverb just like a hall. And you can't hear it yet because the effects one send is all the way down. So let's turn this up and there it is. And these reverbs have all the control you'll ever need. There's pre-delay, room shape, the size, the decay time. You've got a low cut. Takes the uh, low end out of the reverb, which I absolutely love. Here's your high cut. Takes the treble out of the reverb. Right here, you can push these effects out into the stereo field, which is really cool. Like there's the middle. And you can start pushing it way up. And what I've done with some of the patches I've made is like I'll keep the reverb in the middle and then I might have a delay and I'll push that delay way out into the stereo field and then the delay kind of lives out here and the reverb kind of lives in here and it like really cleans it up. This is one of the reasons why this effects unit is so amazing because this is a lot of like mixing stuff that you would do in your doll, like parallel processing, putting your reverb in stereo and putting your delay in mono. Those options usually don't all live under the hood of a synth. If you look at the routing here on layer A, you've got two direct effects. You've got two effects you can run in parallel. And then all of that goes out and there's two more opportunities to add effects. And that's where things like the EQ will come in. Then you can just EQ the whole patch. Um, there's also like a limiter you can put on the end. Super, super cool. Well.